All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Type yes into the chat room if you're able to. Perfect. Are we all set and ready to go? Yep. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Donna Chow, your host and moderator for today's event. Today's webinar is being presented by Lotus Institute of Integrative Medicine. We are more popularly known as eLotus and have been holding educational courses for over two decades. We are proud to be your trusted source for premium CEU content. And on behalf of eLotus today, I just want to thank you guys for being here today and choosing eLotus as your CEU provider. Dr. Choi is one of our most innovative clinicians and very generous with his clinical pearls. We are very lucky to have him teach for us this weekend. This weekend's presentation is an intermediate to advanced class and students are expected to have attended part one and part two of Dr. Choi's kinetic acupuncture courses that he taught last year. If this is your first time learning with Dr. Choi, fair warning, you may have some questions more than the regular student and in this case, please watch his earlier courses to fully grasp Dr. Choi's teaching. For consideration and respect towards Dr. Choi and fellow students, please write down any introductory questions down and refer them to Dr. Choi's earlier courses for the answer. Thank you very much. It is very much appreciated. Today's class is Maximize Recovery of Musculoskeletal Pain with Kinetic Acupuncture Part 3 with Dr. Hong Suk Choi. And this webinar is being recorded. For, before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping, housekeeping topics. We are scheduled to end at 6 p.m. Pacific time today. Lunch is 1 to 2 p.m. And we'll have four breaks at 10 a.m., 11, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. Now let me give you a short overview of our webinar room. To the right of the video feed, you'll find the PowerPoint for today's class. A copy of these slides can be found in a PDF version from the course access page. And under the course video feed, you will find the class, the chat room. Here, you are able to connect with your colleagues who are also attending today's webinar live. For any side chatter, please feel free to private chat. You can do this by clicking on the menu icon at the top right-hand corner of the chat room. If you have any questions regarding your account or technical issues, please feel free to start a private chat with the host. If you have any questions for our speaker today, please type it directly into the chat room. Do not send a private chat to the presenter or host. Again, just type it directly into the chat room so he can see. He'll be able to see it when he's presenting. And please do keep your questions related to the current topic that he is presenting. And just a quick reminder to receive CEU credits for today's class, you must be logged in with us for the entire class time. And you will also get access to watch the video replay for full for full weeks. The class is packed with a lot of great information, so to fully absorb today's information, it's always a good idea to rewatch the important parts. And for our Gold Pass members attending today, you will have unlimited access to all of our English online courses of over 3,000 CE hours. And this includes live webinars like today's class and, also, and all of our distant learning courses. And I'd also like to take this time to thank our sponsor, Evergreen Herbs, as well as their customers. When you choose Evergreen as your herb provider, you're also choosing to invest in the advancement of TCM. Thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get started with today's class on maximize recovery of musculoskeletal pain with kinetic acupuncture with Dr. Choi. Dr. Choi is a top acupuncture clinician with over 24 years of experience specializing in musculoskeletal pain disorders. Dr. Choi started his medical career in Seoul, Korea by earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in the School of Oriental Medicine from Kungji University in 1994 and a PhD in Complementary and Alternative Medicine for, from Cha University in 2008. He is the author of Orthopedic Tests Made Easy and the co-author of Korean Constitutional Medicine, written in Korean. So at this time, let's go ahead and give him a big welcome. And Dr. Choi, you can go ahead and take over from here. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's very nice to see you. Especially, I see you again. So today, we will talk about kinetic acupuncture. Maybe kinetic acupuncture sounds a little bit weird and strange, but it is not that difficult technique, and it can be very helpful for seeing musculoskeletal pain patient. So this is number three, part three. So as Donna introduced me, myself, I graduated Kyunghee University, that is the top notch university in Korea. And I finished PhD in conventional medical school 
in alternative medicine. And I came to United States about 11 years ago, 11 years. I came to United States as a Samna professor at Samna University. And I was the president of Spinal Center, Samna Spinal Center. And it was quite a large clinic with a MRI on site and medical doctors on site, more than 20 steps. So we are specialized in spine and I'm specialized in spine and pain control. And the patient with uh, various joint problems, muscle problems. And this is the reception desk of Samna Spinal Center. And this is the MRI. And these are the research product. I have published research articles regularly in Korea. And after I came back, come to United States, I published a couple of articles regarding EBM and case studies in various journals. Here you can find it. And wrote a couple of books. This book is interesting. This is Japanese book. That acupuncture style came from Korea, transferred to Japan, and it became a very famous book in Japan, and it translated into Dutch in Europe. And that is the first translated book, ancient acupuncture book in Europe, but never have been English version. And I just translated that book about two years ago. And this is my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kinetic acupuncture. Without space, just kinetic acupuncture. YouTube.com slash kinetic acupuncture. You can find a lot of patient footages, uh, which I will discuss today. And you can check that and view them. and short educational clips. I think you can use And These are the articles I'm issuing, I'm writing now, right now. So this is the current issue regarding EBM and research method with my faculty member, Dr. So. It is my great honor working with her. And we are publishing the articles regarding research method in acupuncture today. So you can find them in acupuncture today. And this is my website, kineticacupuncture.org. Not my website. This is a website, Kinetic Acupuncture Association. So it is an association website. Recently, I got a lot of visitors into this website. I'll tell you why. And these are the contents I will cover today. In past CEU, I tried to introduce fundamentals and basic philosophy of kinetic acupuncture, more focused on philosophy and concept and background theories. And I think that is very essential. So if you are interested in this course, please check the past CEU too. I will recap everything quickly in this class, though still it would be better if you, you look up those past CU and you can find the fundamentals and basic theories behind all this process. And I covered low back pain and shoulder pain major problems in last CU, but I approach it from general theory to specific conditions. So it was based on general theory, but this time I changed my perspective direction to how to approach. So this time I start from each disease, likewise TFCC or sprained wrist, sprained wrist or hand arthritis, meniscus tear or jumper's knee, runner's knee, so it will be a convenient way of approach. So all chapters are divided by 
the name of the disease. I wouldn't say this is the best way of learning acupuncture. Actually, I don't like this kind of approach. This is sometimes called cookbook approach. Just like a cookbook in your dining room, you, you find the dish you want to cook and find the recipe and follow them through acupuncture in the world of acupuncture that kind of maneuver doesn't work let me check quickly so it, it is from Dana so I need to see okay Oh, Kendall, it is very nice to see you again. So today, this chapter is just for convenience. In your clinical practice, you will see many patients who start from their problems, their disease. Like, I have a meniscus tear. I have a spondylosis. I have a rotator cuff tear. In those cases, this kind of division approach can be helpful for convenience but fundamentally you need to understand from general the basic theories so this CU I will approach it this way from disease to fundamentals so I will cover all the disease here listed here including bells per C, foot drop and TMJ pain and we have a unique approach in kinetic acupuncture. And let me talk about kinetic acupuncture first. And if you see the PDF file, the presentation file, you can see this all the chapters start this format. So first name of the disease. Right below the title, you can find the symptoms patient complain express so name of the disease and the typical patient description regarding this problem like hand arthritis they complain my fingers are stiff and deformed recently or these days so these are the typical symptoms of hand arthritis so intuitively i hope you can understand each disease and on the right side there is a picture. So all the chapter consists of this format. This is the start of the chapter. Kinetic acupuncture is just simply acupuncture combined with movement. This is a recap from the last class. And we can find many tradition, ancient tradition from history regarding kinetic acupuncture. Acupuncture and movement. First, Hu Qi, Hu Qi, Hui Qi. This is the passage from Acupuncture and Moxibusion, a clinical desk reference published in 2007. It explained the Hu Qi, the method of Hu Qi, this way slowly needle on the side of tendon or the adjacent area beside the tendon. So, it, this method is not approaching. The problem with traditional meridian, but based on anatomy. For example, knee joint arthritis do not needle the knee directly, but treat the point on the side like GB34, SP9, SD36, the tendons, in order to let sensation travel to the joint. This is one kind of long needle insertion technique. During the insertion, you should change the direction of the needle to get sensation to travel. This is the important part. During the insertion, you should change the direction of the needle to get sensation to travel. This is called chicken foot needling, and I will show you how to do it. I will come back to that. Uh, when sensation travels to the joint, so you can say this is TT response. And this is very important in kinetic acupuncture too. Withdraw the needle to beneath the skin and let the patient 
move the joint, then apply the deep needling again. So needling and apply the movement and more needling and movement again. This technique usually treats excess symptoms of the joint, muscles, and tendons. This is one traditional, tra traditional method used in China called Huqi.